So like I said before, I kind of wanted to start this conversation with explaining how my career path didn't take a straight line mm -hmm. after I left high school. And so mm -hmm. I really didn't know how to get into college or what to do about college in the first place, even though my, okay. my high school grades were pretty good. I got A's and mm -hmm. B's and whatnot. Okay. So because I didn't know, I chose the military and I went into the Marine Corps. Right. right? So that was a good starting point for me. But mm -hmm. when it was time to get out, you know, I was a grunt. So the mm -hmm. backstory is I was a grunt, you know, right. I was taught to use a, a rifle. And a rifle. that's yeah, pretty much right. all of the skills I had. <laughs> so I got out and I didn't have any transferable skills to be in the civilian sector. Mm -hmm. Okay. My first job out of the Corps was selling ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So not a great career path, but it was something that, you know, to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Friends suggested go to college. So I, you know, this is North Carolina. This is back in the nineties. I go into college. Um, didn't have, like I said, I was good in, I was good in academics in high school, but when you go into the core and you don't lose it, I mean, you don't use, use it, it, you lose it. it. Right. So taking the placement tests for, you know, math, English reading didn't do well. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to spend the extra time kind of going through the labs and kind of building up my skills. So I chose the easy way out. I became a social worker. Um, That's not an easy way out. It was a degree that didn't require math. <laughs> ah, well, there you go. So okay. it was an easier way out. It wasn't <laughs> probably the best route, but it was definitely an easier way. Yeah. I did that and I was a social worker for a good you know, decade or so. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really kind of flame in the fire. I wasn't not really passionate about anything. And what, you know, what to do? Mm -hmm. I went class. into, got my master's degree. So I chose, oh, initially it was an MBA, mm -hmm. but then I kind of was liking the IT part of it. So I actually got my, my master's degree in computer information assistance. Mm, okay. So far, so good. So I did that for a couple of years, but then I thought back to, well, I, I kind of liked the whole idea of, you know, the teachers, my professors in college, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just standing up a couple of days out of the week, you know, giving a lecture and then saying, hey, go read the textbook <laughs> and then publishing some papers. So I went into and got my doctorate degree thinking that was going to be, you know, a great way to spend the rest of my life through my 40s, sure. through my 50s, retire nice. That'd it didn't nice. quite yeah. work out that way. <laughs> Um, Life well, never a, does. Yeah. There's a whole lot to publishing, you know, research papers and getting peer reviewed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I, I really should have had this conversation with you 20 years ago <laughs> because <laughs> well, my career yeah. path wasn't what I intended it to be. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not how anybody coming out of high school or and going into college or even in trying to figure things out. They shouldn't have to make those mistakes. And so this is where people like you come in value yeah. to other people. And you've got a lot of interesting stuff in there. I mean, you, you, you got a lot of interesting ways and uh, a lot of possibilities. I mean, one of the things that, that my program works on is what are your goals? Okay. What do you want to get out of your life? And that's where you start from. That's so a difficult I, question to answer. It is. It's not necessarily an easy question. Okay. Um, but it's, it's an important one. And, it doesn't have to be, you know, your ultimate life. Goal. Sorry, going out of, out of camera there. <laughs> it's okay. But, um, it doesn't have to be your ultimate, ultimate life goal. But, you know, it's, it's how do you want to live your life? You know, what do you want? Um, you know, what do you want to end? You know, kind, kind of where you want to end up, but not exactly, just sort of. I mean, you know, like transitioning military folks. Actually, we work with a lot of transitioning military folks because they're exactly in that point. What do I want to do? Where do I want to go? I've had a lot of interesting experience. I know leadership. I know, you know, I know how to be in part of a team. I know how to do all this stuff. But what do I do with myself once, you know, once I walk off the base? What do you know? Yeah, yeah. So the question becomes, well, what do you want? You know, what kind of income do you want to learn, earn? I mean, you know, everyone wants to be Jeff Bezos, but no one's going to be <laughs> Jeff Bezos, right? You know, but what, 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 you know, what kind of life do you want to live? I want to have a home. I want to have, you know, maybe a a spouse, a couple of kids, maybe, you know, go on vacation a few times a year, have time for my friends, have, uh, have an income where I can live comfortably, you know, not everybody 
has that burning ambition, but everyone wants to have a nice life, comfortable life. Um, and so, you know, what are those kind of goals for yourself? And, uh, you know, also, you know, you know, you want to retire someday. Maybe you want to have something you pass on to your kids. So what kind of wealth and equity do you want to build up? And so, um, so are these you know, are the kind of conversations that you have or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We call them ILWI, Income, Lifestyle, Wealth and Equity Goals. Okay. And that's what the Entrepreneur Source uh, does. And that's my group, the Entrepreneur Source. We're a, we're a entrepreneurial oriented career coaching group. Oh. If that makes sense. So not necessarily a job, but to- A career. A career. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What we do is we give people the opportunity to explore something they may not have thought of before. Something may take them outside their comfort zone a little bit. The question we start off is, what would it be like if I owned a business? Do I even want to? Is that a good idea for me? Some people it is, some people it isn't. Most people think about it at some point in their lives. So we give you a chance to, you know, to think about things um, and, and play a little bit of what if. You know, what if I did get a business? What would that business look like? What business would I even go into? Um, you know, is this... Uh, you know, do I have the temperament for it? Do I have the, can I get the money for it? Can I, you know, can, do I know what it's like to run this? What would the finances be like? And we go through this whole process of learning. It's all about learning. And, uh, you know, at some point, some people say, you know, hey, this is great. Owning a business isn't for me. Most people say that, but at least they, they learn about themselves along the way. You know, uh, we, we do some evaluations and we do a really good assessment called a DISC, which really gets a uh, helps you understand a lot about yourself, how you, what motivates you, how you communicate, um, things that you do that get in your own way. So, you know, a lot of insight. And we talk about uh, your goals, like we said, and we talk about skills and interests and all that. A and look at these things and people come out and they'll say, hey, you know, um, maybe, you know, maybe I could own a business and do quite well at it. Great. You know, you're on your way. Um, you know, I learned about it and it really isn't the right folks thing for me, but I've learned about my, a lot about myself and that's great. And you kind of go forward with uh, a little better uh, insight into yourself and your, your job search can be um, a little more focused, a little more directed um, because you understand yourself better. You understand situations that work for you and things like that. So it, e either one of those is a successful outcome you know, if, if people work through the program. And so that's what I help people do. I help people learn about themselves. I help them step a little outside of their comfort zone, ex explore explore business ownership, and and you'll see and you see if it's a good thing or not. Um, so that that's kind of what what I do, what my group does, what we've been doing for about forty five years now. So. so not me personally, but oh, okay, but but it, it actually you you give some some insights into, you know, if you're exploring passion, need, mm -hmm. expectation, mm -hmm. skill from a personal perspective, you see, because you're actually diving into right. the individual and saying, you know, you know, the interview question is, where do you see yourself in five years? Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this very much translates to, you know, in that coaching environment where, you know, what do you see yourself as a mm -hmm. you know member of a family? Do you want to right. be married? Mm -hmm. Are you married? Children? Right in order to have a sustainable life just with that you right. have to have a certain salary expectation you know you just yeah. can't say oh i'm going to be married and live in this you know mm -hmm. quarter million dollar house but i'm only making thirty thousand dollars as a social right. worker yeah what, what's a reasonable probably not going to cut it right yeah. yeah yeah um can i share my screen is that okay um we can sure give that a try i i mean it, it says i can so oh uh, yeah go for it what do you want to share so here, um, this, do you see that? I do. This, you, you two point out? Okay, th this, is, this is a tool that, that I use with folks and it, it goes exactly to what we're talking about. It's kind of a, a career perspective exercise. It's kind of, yeah, have you ever heard of a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses? For, yeah, right. for a business planning. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, for, for a career. And, and you look at things here. It's, you know, if we look at your life a year from now, what changes have to have happened to a, you know, for it to be a meaningful year for you. Mm -hmm. And then we look at things like, you know, what, what are the things that, uh, you know, what are the dangers that you face in your career? What are the obstacles, the things that uh, 
keep keep you were you know keep you up at night thinking about things so before you go on for go those on. listening to us on the podcast and they ah. can't see this um you have three columns here one yes. says dangers one says opportunities and one says strengths so right. yes. in very much uh the same way as a swat you know strengths weaknesses right, right opportunities and opportunities yeah right yeah so we look at the like i said the dangers that these are the things that give you concern about your career and people have different ones age variety longevity whatever it is everyone has different different needs and then opportunities these are the the things you want to get out of life i want to have time for my family i want well, to can i read some of these yeah no? please okay please, so the first one says to control my own destiny and right. for that's a very specified and mm -hmm. specific and it's first <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah yeah and, and and it's probably first for a purpose yeah and the second one says to spend more time with things that matter most yeah and then number three is to reach my desired income lifestyle wealth and equity so yeah personally i could identify with those three things as needing mm -hmm. to be at the top yeah are they purposefully at the at the top the first three things or how did you create that those as... i didn't create it personally i mean this has been built by by the entrepreneur source over over years of, of refinement and so those are probably you know some of the top three i mean i was talking to a, a guy today and he's like i gotta get control of my life back you know i the job is driving me crazy i you know I, they're calling me 24 hours a day i need control of my life so yeah. that's control my own destiny, be able to set my schedule reasonably, to be able to do what I want to do and not be married to my work, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That's a big one for people. You know, everyone wants to have some control over their life and not feel like they're, you know, kind of running downhill without a break. And and that's really good for really helping people identify the type of lifestyle that they need or mm -hmm. wants to have. Yeah. You know, everybody talks about the work-life balance and that probably doesn't mm -hmm. really exist until you do that until you mm -hmm. take control over the situation so right. whether it's not you're, you're setting personal parameters around your career mm -hmm. your professional life your boss your employer right. or you're creating a system um as an entrepreneur or a business owner that really allows you the opportunity right to make that balance and make that's exactly balance. right and we talk about get, building for yourself the opportunity to build that balance you know nothing comes automatic but it gives you the tools to, to kind of ex execute that control over your life so that's that's part of what that's what the opportunities are about but i also see some of the danger elements and, mm -hmm. and again going back to the first three now i always think the top three are important for a reason okay. and so the first one reads how long will i be employable right and, <laughs> And so I look at that and I always say, when I'm ever talking with somebody, for whatever reason, either I'm proud of it or I'm scared of it. And maybe it's the dichotomy of the two. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be 53 this year. Yeah, you're you know? great. great. So, oh, I, so how long am I going to be employable? Right. And, but that's a real question because, mm -hmm. Absolutely. you know, I know I, I won't find, and I'm, I have an IT background and I can't get certain IT jobs because young people are getting them. So yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. And so where am I now? And so I do, mm -hmm. I will always be a technical trainer and that's what I do mm -hmm. professionally. Right. But I am looking to do other things. Like I said, I have conversations with people such as yourself every week, we but today. that's yeah. really critical. Mm -hmm. How long am I going well, to be you, Well, you know, I work with a lot of folks my general clientele runs in the 45 to 55 range. Okay. Okay. I mean, is not that a scary question? No, not, not. Yes, it is. It scares a lot of people. It's okay. Like, you know, I talk to folks here. I am, you know, I, I'm, I'm 50. I'm stuck. You know, my career isn't going anywhere or I've been laid off because of COVID or, um, you know, you know, I, I can keep my job, but I'm on the road, uh, you know, this, and I can't really take it anymore. And, you know, I don't know how long I can stay in this job. How long will I be employable? Mm -hmm. Will I be able to, you know, have the rest of my career? So yeah, it's a very real question. And a lot of people are hitting like the gray ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, especially in IT. Mm -hmm. 
right? Um, you know, unless you have last week's skill set, you're you're already old. Yeah. You know, actually, you need next week's skill set to be on top of things. <laughs> And so if you're not 27, just coming out of college with the latest degree or the latest certification, you're already behind the curve. Right. So a lot of people, you know, am I going to be able to stay employed? How long will I be employed? So what are my options? Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big, big concern for people. Absolutely. And then number two says conventional career options are more, more limited. limited. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you speak to that, could you do me a favor? Could you mm -hmm. could you take us out of share screen so that? Oh yeah, um, I'm sorry. Of course, that's okay. So people can kind of see us better. That's um, fine. So conventional careers. I um, spoke tomorrow. with mm -hmm. somebody out in California, and he said the the traditional career is gone. We are no, now in something called a gig economy, which was in, and I'm so far out of touch because, like I said, I'm 53 and mm -hmm. I don't keep in touch with these yeah. new terminologies are you familiar with that term gig economy? yeah i mean what it means is essentially everybody's an independent contractor yeah there's really no such thing as a an employee state and you know it's it you know uber uh type things where you know you, you are doing your thing your way or you take a short-term contract to do something that that's kind of the gig economy and in, and because of that you know the corporate world is changing and what it means to be a corporate employee is 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 being redefined. And so, you know, I, will I be able to stay, keep up with that? Will I be able to live in a gig economy kind of life? Not everybody can, you know, going from job to job. Can I keep my insurance? Can I keep my uh, skill set? Can I keep, you know, can I keep my salary? Right. Um, so, you know, some people can live that way. Some people can't. Younger folks can live that way more than older folks. <laughs> You know, and, and at some point, younger folks become older folks and, and their their attitudes change a little bit. I mean, when I was 20, if I lost my job, it's like, eh, whatever. You know, I'm living in an apartment for a couple hundred bucks a month. I can go do something, whatever. Now, you know, I'm older. I got a wife. I got a home. You know, and you, your, your priorities change. And right. so your thoughts change. And so, um, you know, will I be able to, to navigate the career landscape as a changing? COVID had a big hit on that, but uh, it was kind of coming to begin with. So, yeah, you know, the conventional career paths, the things that we think of going for a company, working there, you know, do put it in your 30, get in your pension mm -hmm. gone. and gone. Yeah. You know, so what else is there? And, and so the way it was explained to me was, you know, you're becoming this independent, independent contractor, mm -hmm. but you're you are in a sense becoming that entrepreneur because mm -hmm. you're using your skill sets and you're selling your brand and your mm -hmm. skills to acquire, you know, not that job, but yeah. work. Right. And yes, that's, that's one part of that. I mean, yes, you, you're basically becoming independent contractor and your value is 100% the work you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, work, you know, write code, get check, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's it, your effort. It, it's really no different than being an employee, but it's a little more immediate. You know, the hours you work is the money you get paid, that sort of thing. Is there another way to do it? You know, can you do something that gives you an income stream that doesn't require you to, you know, every, every hour you work is the dollar you put in the bank. Is there some way to, you know, generate income above and beyond that? And, you know, besides investing in Bitcoin or something, you know, I mean, you can do that. I have a friend who did it quite well, but, you know, not everybody can do, can do that, that right. and know? do it and successfully. So, Right. And so is there some way to, to get something in the middle? Can I, something gives me longevity, gives me, um, you know, a reasonably predictable income stream, um, gives me that, that level of career and financial security. Mm -hmm. um, you know, gig economy does not give you a lot of security. Yeah, not, not so much yeah. unless you're really good at marketing yourself. And making yeah, then you're sales. always, always interviewing for a job. Right. Yeah, consultants are always a consultant spends thirty percent of their time looking for the next next job. Yeah, because it's their dollar. You know, they have to right. Earn yeah, it. right. And in every job, you, you don't have a job, you don't get paid. There's a lot of stress in that, mm -hmm. and especially if you if you've got a wife or a, you know a kids or a partner or whatever you've got, and you got responsibilities above and beyond yourself. How can you, you know, how can you meet those responsibilities in some way that doesn't kill you? You know, so yeah go on so does being so when you set somebody up 
to be a successful entrepreneur, mm -hmm. surely these are parts of those, you're having these types of conversations as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and that, that's what it's all about. Okay. You know, what um, are you concerned with? How do you live your life? Yeah. But on the flip of that, when they're ready to take the step and say, hey, you know, I both can and will and willing to take the risk, mm -hmm. you, you're then, I guess, your job is to set them up for to be as successful as they can be, because that's what we want. Mm -hmm. That's true. So how yeah. does that take place? How does how do those well, first couple of steps, because usually the first steps right. of any journey are the toughest to take? That's true. I mean, it's always it's kind of getting to the point where you're ready to make the choice and then you have to take that leap into the unknown. Yeah. You got to walk through the door. Yeah, there, you see my hand disappears into the unknown. Yeah. Um, I like that can, analogy. Yeah, you, you have to take the leap into the unknown. You have to walk through the door, whatever you want to call it. Right. And you're facing a lot of fear. Right. Right. There's there's fault. And one of the things we do in my business is say fear is false evidence appearing real. Hmm. Okay. I mean, there, I mean, if a bear is chasing you, there's reason to be afraid. But a lot of things that you're looking at career-wise and all this, you're afraid of because you don't understand it. Okay. And if you understand it, you can choose to do it or not, but it's not an emotional reaction. If what do you mean you, by that? Because fear okay. is an emotional reaction. Fear is an emotional reaction. Exactly. Okay. But a lot of fear, especially if you're looking at an investment possibility, you're looking at a business, you're looking at changing your career, there's a lot of fears that come up, a okay. lot of emotions that come up. But we say, you know, for those things, let's take a step back. You know, if you could understand how this thing made money, would that change it for you? Well, yes, because you understand it. And now you can say, okay, I see how I can do that. Let's do it. Or I understand it and I choose not to do it. That's different than being not doing it because you're afraid. One is an, one is an avoidance. The other one is a positive choice. Okay. How do you make positive choices to move your career forward? So that, that's what I mean there. Okay. And so a lot of your time then has been educating mm -hmm. people on the, pro the process and as well as the risk. Well, yeah, I mean, there's risks and, you know, understanding those risks, putting those risks up, discussing them, um, also looking at options, you know, what, what, what kind of business would I even go into? Am I, am I good to do some kind of consulting business? Am I good to do a, a service business? Am I good to do a retail business? Am I good to do, you know, a restaurant, whatever it is, you know, how do you even know? Most people don't know. 95% right. of the people who, who we work with end up someplace they never thought they would look they would uh, be because they look at things in terms of those those goals, the income, lifestyle, wealth, and equity goals, those right. dangerous opportunities and threats. And if you look at it that way, um, you can kind of open yourself up to more possibilities. I mean, people we work with, you know, my last, one of my guys last year went into mosquito management, um, mosquito Joe. Okay. You know, it's one that of That sounds most, familiar. Yeah. You, you probably see their trucks around. In you know, Virginia, I'm out here in Virginia and I said, yeah. I think I do. Yeah, yeah, they're around here, you know, and, and you know, it's a franchise and I work with franchises a lot because they, they help people be successful. And so wait have, a second, there's, how did that happen? He became, he became Mosquito Joe? He, he bought a Mosquito Joe franchise. Oh, okay, because, it's a franchise. Okay, he I looked thought at he, it. No, he didn't. You know, okay, I thought he was the man. Okay. No, 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 he didn't start, but he, he looked at it. He looked at Mosquito Joe right. and he said, you know, I, I like winter. I like having my time off in the winter. And this is a spring, summer kind of business. Right. I, you know, I love the outdoors. This is a chance to do that. I had Lyme disease as a kid. And so I understand the pain of, you know, hmm. of mosquitoes and things ruining your life. And it turned out that that, you know, he could make the money he wants to edit. He becomes a, he becomes a Mosquito Joe franchisee. And it's a whole new life for him. A whole new I would life. love to have talked to this person and figure out how he made that that transition. That was probably yeah. a pretty awesome conversation. But that, you know, that's really what it's about is finding new possibilities, understanding them, and then at some point taking an educated, measured, calculated leap into the unknown. Okay. I mean, you know. You I'm putting all those educated, calculated, yeah. and then leap, leap into, the into the unknown. Right. Well, it's you know a calculated risk that right. you know you know that's what the term is. And so, how do I, you know, how do I do something? And there's no guarantees in life, but how do you 
set yourself up for the best possibility of success. That's why I work. That's when I when I help people with these things, we look at different kind of existing business models mm -hmm. rather than building something from scratch, which you can certainly do. But the odds of that being successful are a lot lower than if you use something that's already been tried and you know tried and true, been proven in battle, so to speak. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. So you know, um, Mosquito Joe, they solved the problems for their business. They know how to work it. And they got the back end resources, they got the scheduling, and they got the training, and they tell you how to get licensed and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, his chance of being successful are much, much higher than if he decided to do it on his own. So my one of my last few questions, though, is when I looked on your LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. you have the words no cost and no mm -hmm. obligation. You got it. Where does that fit into your business model and how does that work? Well, I, I do make a living at this. Okay. Being a coach. I mean, okay. as much as I enjoy it, it's not a charity. Okay. Understood. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. No, there was no expectation, but no, I, I know. I I'm see just, no I'm cost just, and somebody should be jumping on, knock, knocking on your door every day. Uh, and people do. Okay. Um, but it's the way it works is I, I'm going to work with a couple hundred people this year. Okay. I'm going to have a couple hundred people I'm going to work with, talk with, um, have them start ex examining businesses, um, you know. Everyone looks at three or four different businesses, compares. You know, a lot of people, they get to some point and they decide it's not for them, and that's fine. But a handful of them, you know, maybe eight, 10%, actually decide that going into business is a good career move for them. And when they do, and they go into one of these businesses, I get a finder's fee on the back end. That's, okay. It's really that simple. But it's never anything that they have to deal with. I never charge, if you, if you were my client, I would never, ever charge you for my services. If you go into business, you go into business, you make your own investments, but that has nothing to do with me. Okay. Does so, that make sense? yeah, um, much like a recruiter finding a kind, job for somebody. Kind, yeah, kind of, sort of, okay. like that, kind of like a real estate agent, you know, it's one of those types of, uh, you know, paid on the back end sort of things. Okay. How do people find you other than LinkedIn and how can, um, you um, have, cause I want to put all the contact, your contact information yeah, in the uh, descriptions. J. Callistein, my name, J. C. A. L. L. I. S. T. E. I. N. Uh, at esourcecoach.com. That's my email. Okay. It's also J. Callistein.esourcecoach.com is my website. Okay. So uh, that's the best way to find me. And then okay. from there, you can, you can, you know, I got links there for my calendar and phone numbers and all that kind of good stuff. So it's. And uh, you're located East Coast, West I, Coast? I'm located on the East Coast. I'm, I'm in Rockville, Maryland, just, uh, I'm just north of DC. Okay. Excellent. And, uh, but I'm, I work with folks all over the country. Just in the country or international? Uh, I work with folks in Canada as well. Okay. But I, I could, I could work with people just about anywhere in the world. Okay. So, yeah. so good. Cause I just wanted the audience, mm -hmm. whoever yeah. watches and listens yeah. to that to know yeah. that you're the man to call. Yeah. I, I can work with people anywhere in the world, pretty much, you know, as long, as long as the businesses that I work with you know, are, are able to operate in the, the, that market, but we can find possibilities just about anywhere. Okay. So. What, as we, as we kind of end up the half hour, what motivational, inspirational, what word of advice would you give somebody who's trying to figure it out other than the words, call me, um, <laughs> uh, what would you, what would you want to tell them before we kind of drop the call? Well, I think the, the best thing is, you know, you have possibilities. There are new futures out there for you you may never thought of. If you open yourself up and are willing to step outside your comfort zone, there are amazing things you can do to give you the kind of life that you want to live. That was perfect. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Jerry, thank you so much for your time. This My afternoon. pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime. If you don't mind, can you stay on the call as I take us offline? Yes, okay. absolutely.